My name is Tristan. I have the honor and the privilege of serving as the chair for diversity, equity, and inclusion on the Seminole County Council. Wow, totally messed that up. Seminole County Council TCA. That was a lot to get out. Um, just um, take my email. At the end of the slide presentation, we'll go over some resources or whatnot. Take my email. Um, I'd be honored if you would consider being on our county council committee for DEI as well. And that invitation extends to everybody um, that is joining us today. Um, definitely love your feedback, your input, and uh, networking and ability to create some ideas uh, for DEI and then further um, grow. Um, so again, thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, before we go ahead and get started, a um, few housekeeping things. You know, you don't have to keep your camera off. It's just a couple of us. Um, and looking at icons is kind of boring. And because I'm recording it, I guess I can't actually turn my camera off. Um, so I would very much appreciate it and enjoy it if you'd be willing to share your space with me as well. Also, if you have any questions, again, this is more of a um, informal kind of, we're just going to talk. We're going to go through some things and we're going to have some open dialogue, open conversation, share some suggestions and ideas. I'm gonna go over some of the resources and information that I have, um, that I've been able to locate and things that were made accessible to me. Um, so again, please, by all means, don't hesitate to jump in if you have some feedback or question, comment or concern, any of the above. Alexa, the name of the video that I showed the first time was called I Am Not Black. Um, I will post the link in the chat here if you wanna see it as well. All right, uh, you're very welcome. Can everybody see my screen? Pretty good there? Yeah, we can see it. <clears throat> so again, I'm Tristan. I am the DEI chair for SCCCA. And uh, let's talk DEI. Um, so here's the video. I'm gonna go ahead and play it again for the folks that didn't get a chance to see it. It is a very great video. Um, yeah, so just a second here. I am not black. I mean, that's what the world calls me, but it's not me. I didn't come out of my mother's womb saying, hey, everybody, I'm black. No, I was taught to be black. And you were taught to call me that, along with whatever you call yourself. It's just a label. See, from birth, the world force feeds us these labels. And eventually, we all swallow them. We digest and accept the labels, never, ever doubting them. But there's one problem. Labels are not you, and labels are not me. Labels are just labels. But who we truly are is not skin deep. See, when I drive my car, no one would ever confuse the car for me. Well, when I drive my body, why do you confuse me for my body? It's my body. Get it? Not me. Let me break it down. See, our bodies are just cars that we operate and drive around. The dealership we call society decided to label mine the black edition, yours the Irish or white edition. And with no money down, 0% APR, and no test drive, we were forced to own these cars for the rest of our lives. Forgive me, but I fail to see the logic or pride in defining myself or judging another by the cars we drive. Because who we truly are is found inside. Listen, I'm not here to tell you how science has concluded that genetically we're all mixed and race in the human species doesn't exist or how every historian knows that race was invented in the 15th century to divide people from each other and it has worked perfectly. No, I'm not here to lecture. I just want to ask one question. Who would you be if the world never gave you a label? Never gave you a box to check? Would you be white, black? Mexican, Asian, Native American, Middle Eastern, Indian? No, we would be one. We would be together. No longer living in the era of calling human beings black people or white people. These labels that will forever blind us from seeing a person for who they are, but instead seeing them through the judgmental, prejudicial, artificial filters of who we think they are. And when you let an artificial label define yourself, 
Then my friend, you have chosen smallness over greatness and minimized yourself, confined and divided yourself from others. And it is an undeniable fact that where there is division, there will be conflict, and conflict starts wars. Therefore, every war has started over labels. It's always us versus them. So the answer to war, racism, sexism, and every other ism is so simple that every politician has missed it. It's the labels. We must rip them off. Isn't it funny how no baby is born racist? Yet every baby cries when they hear the cries of another No matter the gender, culture, or color Proving that deep down we were meant to connect and care for each other That is our mission, and that is not my opinion That is the truth in a world that has sold us fiction Please listen, labels only distort our vision Which is why half of those watching this will dismiss it Or feel resistance and conflicted But just remember, so did the caterpillar before it broke through its shell and became the magnificent butterfly Well these labels are our shells and we must do the same thing So we can finally spread our wings Human beings were not meant to be slapped with labels like groceries and supermarkets DNA cannot be regulated by the FDA We were meant to be free and only until we remove them all And stop living and thinking so small Will we be free to see ourselves and each other For who we truly are All right. Um, <clears throat> so I played that video because I felt that it spoke a lot, um, especially when we're talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, it's important to understand that what happens um, when people, I mean, I think the best analogy in that video is when he said that no one will confuse me for my car. So why is it that people do that with the car that we've been given, right? Um, I, that was so powerful. I've seen this video at least four or five times and it never gets old for me because it speaks volumes. Um, so going a little bit further into the presentation again, um, I broke down the four the difference or the definition of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, so diversity, a range of different things that state the state of being diverse, right? Um, the way I like to put it is being invited to the dance. Equity, the quality of being fair and impartial. It's important to note that equity and equality are not the same thing. Um, whereas, <clears throat> well, actually, we'll get a little bit more into that later on, but they do sound the same. Um, and they, they, there are some similarities um, in the definition of them, but they're not actually the same. And again, there is actually another slide with the best illustration to help you to understand the difference between equity and equality. Um, and then there's inclusion. Inclusion, the act or state of including or of being included within a group or structure. I think um, the way that I like to break that down, again, um, is being asked to dance. So being invited to the dance is great, but how many times do you see where someone gets invited to a dance and everybody's standing on the wall? Reason being is because they still don't really feel as though they're welcomed, as though that they are being included. Um, so taking a moment to ask them to dance makes all the difference in the world. However, the first step is being invited. Any questions on that part thus far? All right, so we'll move on. So I had the privilege of speaking with the, uh, I said this earlier and I think I messed it up, but I'll try it again. Um, her name is Minnie. She is the National PTA Fellow for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Um, and she breaks down DEI as it applies to our local units into three categories, education, engagement, and empowerment. Later on in the presentation, we're going to talk about those categories and what do you think your school is at and how do we get from one level to the next. Um, again, I went through this history and I thought that this history was important. History is important because in order for us to get to where we need to go, we have to first understand where we've been. Um, and I think most of you saw the presentation before. Those of you that didn't, it's very simple. 1897, National PTA was founded. 1927, the National Congress of Colored Parents and Teachers was founded. 
1954, the landmark case, uh, Brown, it's actually Oliver Brown versus the Board of Education, where he was the main plaintiff in a class action lawsuit against the Board of Education, citing that education for people of color was not the same as people or their Caucasian counterparts. Um, and at that time, segregation was still very prevalent. It was a normal practice. And their, how do I put it, their way of uh, justifying segregation was that it was separate but equal. Um, the case of Brown versus Board of Education cited that separate but equal was not accurate because the people of color that were in these segregated schools were not getting the same opportunities and they weren't getting the same level of education and the same treatment as their counterparts. Um, obviously, that case was, uh, Mr. Brown was successful and then in 1964, passing the Civil Rights Act, making it illegal to discriminate based on race, color, religion, sex, creed, or sexual orientation, et cetera. It wasn't until six years later that the National PTA and the National Congress of Colored Parents and Teachers uh, joined and became one. Um, <clears throat> I guess when you look at it, six years really isn't that long of a time. But if you think about it, if you're a parent and you think about who your child was at a newborn and then who your child is six years after that as a six-year-old, um, more than likely already going through kindergarten, making your way to first grade, a lot happens in that time. So my question is, why did it take so long? And more importantly, how do we keep that or prevent that from happening in the future? How do we continue to advocate and to represent DEI in our schools, in our communities, um, even in our households? How, how do we bridge that gap? So let's talk about diversity. Um, again, like I said before, diverse or this presentation or this class is meant to be an open discussion, an open exchange of ideas and information. So it's definitely going to be interactive. Um, I would very much like it if folks would volunteer, but I went to school at a different time where the teacher had no problem calling on people. Um, but I would ask that uh, you all would participate in the discussion. I don't want it to be a, I'm talking at you kind of thing. I want it to be an exchange of information on uh, both sides. So can anyone give me some feedback or some information uh, regarding diversity in their particular PTA? Um, I, like I said, is my first year. Um, my daughter just entered um, high school, so she's a ninth grader. So I decided to be involved um, in the PTA and I've noticed that I'm actually the only Latina in, in the um, in the PTA. So I was kind of like interested about figuring out what what would be the reason. But I think it's because it's intimidating when you see that other people really don't look like you, so you can't really relate. Um, I, I'm just assuming, but um, I my PTA I don't believe it's very diverse. And that, unfortunately, is a common occurrence. And a lot of it stems from what you said, as well as the popular misconception of what PTA is. Um, I didn't join PTA until this year either. Um, I originally started off as the school advisory council chair uh, for my kids' school. And I got involved because I want to know what my kids know, and I want to know that they're getting the best possible education and the best possible experience. Because when you think about it, if you break down how many hours in a day your child is at school and how many hours they should be sleeping and then how many hours they're spending with you. You do that in a day and then you look at it over the course of a week, and unless of course, you know, you're doing virtual learning, but they spend more time in school. So in order to make sure that they're getting the best possible education and the best possible experience, um, it's like, I, I gotta get involved and I gotta do something. Um, <clears throat> and so a lot of times what you'll find in PTAs is that you'll get the same group of parents that continue to rotate amongst the different uh, positions because they're the only ones there. And inadvertently, they kind of create this uh, 
click mentality, if you would. And I don't, and I don't believe, or I'm going to give everyone a benefit of that and say that's not intentional, but it's just when you spend enough time around people, you develop a bond, you develop a friendship to the point to where you guys are always hanging out. And it's kind of intimidating of sorts, if you would, um, for other people to feel like it's coming in. So one of the things we want to look at is how do you make it to where it's not that, to where you have the diversity and that people are not feeling that way. Um, which leads to the next question. How do you address it? It's a tough conversation. It most certainly is. In my PTA, I am the, well, one of two males. Um, the other gentleman is the chair of what we call our all pro family, which was formerly called, um, all pro dad originally. Um, and then we changed it. I believe it was last year and it became all pro family, but he's the only father. Um, on the PTA, and then I came along and I ended up uh, being elected president. But I'm also the only uh, person of color on my PTA. And the question is, how do I change that? What, what do I do to change that? Um, and part of it is, again, making sure that folks feel welcome and meeting people where they are. Um, you know, I don't have a problem recruiting. It doesn't matter where I'm at. I can recruit anywhere um, because I want people to be involved. I want people to understand and take as much investment in their child's future and education as I do. And I'm sure they do too, but it's a matter of explaining to them the commitment is not as great, but the um, investment or the return on their investment is much greater. Um, um, I have a question. It's Angela. Go ahead, Angela. Um, yeah. So our, I, came on to PTA a few years ago and um, we basically don't turn anybody away, you know, if, like any PTA, right? We're like, we need help. We'll take 30 minutes, you know, and um, that seems to have helped bring all sorts of people because there, people are like, oh, 30 minutes, you know, I can, I can help for 30 minutes. Um, and so we have at Carillon, uh, we have, we're right next to UCF. So we have, uh, a fun mix of like Chinese, Indian, every, you know, a lot of the parents maybe work at the school at UCF. And, um, so what, what I find and I see everybody, um, is when I do happen to see like, um, we don't have any African-American, um, like board members. Now I have people that help, um, but it, I don't know because we want everybody to be included. And I talk to everybody the same and I'm always like, yes, you know, if you want to help, but part of me feels like they're going to think I'm going after them because of the color of their skin. And I don't want them to think that. And so I just, I'm very general with everybody. I'm like, yes, if you want to help, but I don't even know, you know, these days, especially where we are, I mean, I don't even know what people are. I don't care. You know, I'm like, we will take anybody as long as you will help, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. So like, I don't want to offend, you know, um, I don't want to offend people because I don't want them to think, oh, she just wants me because of the color of my skin, which I don't. We have. We are fortunate. We have a few. Um, like uh, one of our girls is from Puerto Rico, uh, or two of them are actually. We have um, someone from, I believe uh, she is from India. Uh, we have a Chinese dad that helps us. But so, what are like? Do you have any? You know, do we just keep doing what we're doing and hope somebody jumps on board or? Hey, uh, Tristan, Tristan, after you make your comment, I, I do have something to say about that, but I want you to address her first, but I do have something to say about that. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you all for participating. This is what I, this is what my intent behind this class was. So I'll tell you what I do. Um, so we have a Facebook page for our PTA and we've got, I, don't know, I think it's like a hundred and some odd members, 140 members. So what I did was, is I put out a mass post, like, hey, anyone interested in being involved? You know, what, uh, what would you like to do? What are your interests? And when someone responded, said, yes, I'm interested, I immediately sent them um, a direct message. Like, hey, you have a chance to talk, here's my number. You know, let's set up some time to just chat. 
Um, and so when I spoke to them, and this worked several times, when I spoke to them, I got to ask them, so tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me what your interests are. Tell me what it is you like to do. And as they go through that, I find a position that aligns with their interests. Um, and so all the, and ultimately, it, it, for me personally, I could care less if you were pink, purple, green, or orange or brown. That's irrelevant. The point is, is that what you are interested in, what you are passionate about, I have a need for. And so I'm recruiting you for your passion and not necessarily for the diversity aspect. And, you know, and I'll tell you, my principal, the reason I became, uh, ended up on the SAC is because the principal reached out to me directly and said, hey, Mr. Murray, um, you know, I see you at all the functions at the school. We'd really like for you to be involved in our SAC um, to accurately represent our family population. And that's what she said. And to me, there was absolutely nothing wrong with that. Granted, everybody may take it a little bit differently, but to me, it was an honor because some people just don't do it or don't have the time or don't want to, but I had the time, I had the means and I had the ability to, and I was like, yeah, absolutely, sure, I'll come out. And it just so happens at the first meeting, I ended up getting elected chair of the staff. Um, but she was very straightforward um, because, again, in order for this to work, we have to be able to see all sides of the spectrum. We have to have different perspectives and different perceptions in order to um, reach everybody, in order to accommodate everybody. So the things that I might think of from a man's perspective, from a father's perspective, from a husband's perspective is definitely not going to be the same as everybody else. So nothing wrong with finding out a person's passion, finding out the things that they're interested in, and then finding a position that you think would best suit them. And if it happens to be a position as a committee chair, then so be it. And if it's not, then so be that as well. Just as long as everybody has a voice and everybody is being represented. Um, um. Let me see. I'm gonna make. I'm you sorry. Say, I'm gonna make you say it. I'm just gonna stay silent. I'm gonna do you like I did the substitute <laughs> teachers. <in school. laughs> well, I was looking. Hold on. Uh, Bacala, is that how you say it? Right. That's what you said. Bacala, that's right. That's right. So. Okay. Um, so I Angela, I you know first I applaud you for your honesty and your openness in sharing that because I think, I think that's real, right? That's a real concern. That's a real. You know, that I'm sure other people, have, you know, kind of ponder the same thing and have the same concerns. So here's the thing. For me, why, why I, I'm on the board, I, uh, I participated in PTA. Because really, when you look at me in my life, I'm the type of person that you would think I shouldn't because I shouldn't have the time. And I absolutely do not have the time. Right. I'm a single mom. I have a kid in college. I have a middle school. I have a demanding job. I got I got mortgage. I got this. I got that right now. I'm multitasking with a laptop on my phone and doing something else. I shouldn't have the time, but I do it because I understand the importance of it. And the reason I do is because I want somebody to see just how busy I am and think, how can she do that? Because I want them to understand you can do it because it's to it's to this to to kind of go against this whole idea of what PTA moms, the quote unquote PTA moms is supposed to be right historically white, you know, white two income uh, households, stay at home mom, she bakes the cookies, she's not picking them up at Publix, you know, she does everything really right and you know, blah, 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 blah. You don't have to be that. I do it because I understand it is important that my community, my community meaning people, folks that look like me, students that look like my daughter, voices are represented because the, 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 the real truth is, right, Angela, you may, you may feel like you know the best thing for my daughter and you will try your best because you're really trying, you're really trying your best. But sometimes you may be a little bit off. Maybe you need me there to kind of steer you in the right way. So to your question or to your concern of when you're going after, you know, you don't want people to feel like you're going after them because, you know, the color of their skin or whatever. You No, you're going, you, sh you should let them know. I am going, I, I would like you to be involved. We need your voice on our board. We need the diversity. We need the different ways of thinking because there may be something that I think I understand that 
you know I don't understand and I need you to help me get on that path. So I think that, and you know, let's not shy away from it, right? Yeah, you know, the color of the skin, but we're talking about diversity in thinking, diversity in, in ways of living. And how do we, how are we able to, as a PTA organization, deliver services to students as a whole in a, in a, in a manner that benefit them as a whole? You have to be, you have to take in consideration the different diversity, right? And the only right. way you can speak to that is to have a diverse group of folks tackling that problem. So yes, Angela, you have to tell them that I need your help. I need your help because I'm Angela and listen, this is, this is my way. This is my life experiences and I'm going to try my best to service everybody, but I need you there with me to make sure that I'm including everybody like I'm supposed to. I need right. your voice. And I guess we, we, um, we put out some Facebook um, posts and we also like we I think we made out like a Google form and we did put like do, if you have any interests and then we got some responses back. But the big response, we got to put a volunteer form in every backpack that went home this year and we do it every year. But um, from those, I'll make a concerted effort to you know, maybe so this year we're going to be doing a cultural day or night or something, something we don't know yet because of COVID. And, uh, you know, it may be late next year or I mean, you know, spring, but um, maybe that's a way also to pull like what you were saying, Tristan, about different people's interests. Um, and I can say we we want to. I always say I need new faces. And so I can add to that. I can say new faces and new backgrounds and diversity. I can even say that. Right? Tristan, you're on mute. Right. Sorry. Uh, just kidding. Thank you, sir. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, no, absolutely. You know, the, it, it, it's a true fact, right? You know, we speak, we know, um, and even me, like I, I have two twin daughters, right? And I can 100% guarantee you that I have no real idea the things that they go through on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, you know, and they come by and they'll tell me certain, certain things and certain things they only tell they're wrong and then she'll come back and tell me. But at the end of the day, I'm only doing what I think is best. But if someone has more... Uh, information and more experience in that category, absolutely. Um, and Alexa made a comment, and it's true, you know, people need to know that they're valued regardless of the color of their skin. But it is important to educate people about the importance of their voice. And their voice is less to do with the color of their skin and more to do with their experience. Um, because, you know, and again, there's another slide in here that I'm going to bring up eventually. And when you see it, it is eye-opening. It is a very simple, very basic picture but it illustrates um, the difference between equity and equality so perfectly. Um, but yeah, absolutely. So it is a tough conversation to have, but there's nothing wrong with having a conversation um, as, as long as we're being respectful and we're being honest and true to what it is that we're doing and why we're having a conversation and, and being cognizant of what we're saying, because a lot of times it's not necessarily uh, what we say, but more so how we're saying it. Can I can I interject? Absolutely. So I I wanted to make a comment um, about what the lady was speaking of, and I mean she really nailed it. And um, but I wanted to add to that that if people are addressed with the fact that their voice will be valued and is important, because we want to make sure that we reach out all cultural backgrounds and we want to make sure that we include everyone and everyone's opinion is important and they will be representing their um you know their culture cultural culture i'm sorry <laughs> and you know so that's i think that that will help people will feel like oh okay so i am valued my opinion is important i am going to be part of of a group of people who actually care to hear my opinion and to address issues or possible challenges that you know African American or Hispanics or anyone that they would like to reach 
may be facing in the community and in the school. So when you address it in that way and you help people understand the importance of their representation as part of the PTA, they will understand that. And I don't think anyone would get offended if you address them with, uh, you know, with that point of view and explain how important it is for them to be part of it because it will help you know, the greater good. Everyone will be represented and it's not just one side um, that would be heard or addressed. Perfect, thank you. Um, so we've kind of covered that. And then there is the um, part of the oh, wait, we don't have a diversity issue. So I've heard this um, as a response, you know, when asking, hey, uh, you know, do you all have a DEI chair? Oh, what's that? Diversity equity inclusion. Oh, we don't have that inclusion. Because a lot of times people hear diversity and they automatically jump to race. And although that is at the forefront, it is something that is on everybody's mind. Um, you can't turn on the news, TV, social media, or so on and so forth and not see some sort of injustice regarding um, racism and whatnot. But that's not all diversity covers. Um, diversity even goes down to the most simplistic, um, you know, what if you plan an event and you've got 10 people that are vegan or gluten-free? That's also diversity. Or, you know, learning styles or allergies or so many different things. And all of those things create diversity because whenever we're coming together to do something, we need to understand that everybody has a different opinion. Um, you know, some of them may align in one way or another, but that diversity is not just on race. Diversity is everything together. Um, and this is going to be kind of funny because I used this as an example earlier. Um, and it actually goes into something else, but I just want to bring this up because Michelle's still here and she might jump out later. But um, so initially when I put together this class, I wanted to do a skit. And Michelle and I are both on the board of the Sonoma County Council, and I reached out to her and said, hey, Michelle, can you help me do something? And she said, yeah, what is it? Um, and then she, and I kind of explained to her, hey, I want to do this skit of what it would be like as a new parent or a parent to the PTA, and just kind of that, um, and we're going to say it's um, unintentional, but that, that, that clickish mentality or that um, tight-knit group that everyone is afraid to um, answer or two because it's kind of a little bit intimidating and you know I just kind of wanted to reenact that um, and then Michelle shared something with me and not to get into details because it's not my story to tell but she shared something with me and along the lines of um, because it came from something we saw at another training that we went to and she said that hey it was very that was a very effective training however um, I was a little bit offended and uncomfortable by it um, so I you know I Definitely think that you have to do what you think is best, and I'll support you in whatever you do. Unfortunately, I wouldn't be able to participate because it doesn't make me comfortable. And I 100% applaud Michelle for telling me that because as the DEI chair, it's my job to make sure that anything that I'm doing, everyone feels welcome. And if I know that I'm planning something, no matter how effective or how many people it might reach, if I know with, a, with certainty, that it is going to offend one person or make one person feel uncomfortable and unwelcome, then that's not the thing that I need to be doing. And although the masses would have enjoyed it, but that one person who now feels unwelcomed or um, offended or uncomfortable is the person that I need to focus on because that's never the intention. The intention is to make everyone feel welcome. So if it means going back to the drawing board and redoing the plans, then so be it. That's just what needs to be done. Um, and as much work as it took me to rewrite it, you know, the entire time I thought about it, I was like, you know, I, I have to, I have to, because I don't want anyone to not feel welcome or anyone to feel uncomfortable. Um, and oddly enough, the new presentation that I came up with apparently was a great success. Everyone loved it earlier today. And I don't know if you guys can see Michelle's face just popped up. She turned on her camera. Uh, is there something you wanted to add to that, Michelle? I did. I wanted you. I, I just wanted to say thank you for your uh, your acceptance and understanding of that feedback. I am more than happy to do a million and one things to help, but unfortunately, um, and I don't know if anybody else was there, but at the Florida um, PTA leadership training, they did a skit where I literally was going to come through the screen and and start um, making my voice heard because 
in my organization, I work for Bank of America, and we're very, very um, focused on diversity and, and inclusion in our, in our world. And I manage people, so I have to go through additional management training. But one of my challenges, and I shared this with Tristan, was unfortunately in my upbringing, uh, which was in England, um, my mother, uh, who I haven't spoken to in over 30 years, uh, was a, a terrible, terrible uh, racist and, and raised as one and intended to do the same with, with me and my, my sister. And um, it, it was a horrible conflict for, for me and my childhood because of the education I had at school um, and just understanding that she was just plain wrong. Um, but w so when Tristan approached me, it, it was, yes, it would be wonderful, but based on my experience of the Florida one, I, I, I could not, could not do it. Um, and it was very effective, very powerful, but I, I couldn't be on that side of it. I could barely watch it. Um, uh, too many memories of my mom. So Tristan, in your, in your, uh, communication of how that went, thank you for being so sensitive to that. But I wanted to just call out uh, my specifics of why. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle, for sharing that with everybody. Um, and again, like you know, so she and I both sat in that um, demonstration, skit, class, whatever you'd like to refer to it as. Um, and her experience was completely opposite of mine. And so again, that's just another example of the, the importance of having diversity. Because had I just went off of what I thought of the experience. Granted, yes, it was very raw, it was very uncut, very candid, um, and very effective, but I never stopped to think that it could, could possibly make anybody feel uncomfortable, um, because unfortunately, a lot of what they were doing happened, um, and some of it, you know, is what people think, and they don't actually say and put it to words, but yet, some of it is. And so, again, my perspective was that it was very effective, and it was a great idea. Whereas a chef's perspective was, it may have been effective, but it made her uncomfortable. Uh, so the takeaway from that was, okay, back to the drawing board, let's try this again. So moving on to the next slide, um, this is a short video on um, assumptions and how you treat people. And this is, they actually have quite a few different ones. I picked this one in particular because um, I watched a couple of them and I thought that this one was a great um, illustration of sometimes the way we uh, approach people or make assumptions about people, so to speak. So let's just go ahead and watch that one real quick. Travis, tell me what you do for a living. I do a number of things. Uh, I mostly am a freelance video editor. I am also an illustrator and sometimes an actor as well. So, Scott. Yes. What do you do for a living? Nothing. Nothing? <laughs> I'm retired. For 40 plus years, I had a private dental practice. I'm a dentist. Lauren, what are three things that you're absolutely passionate about? I would say writing, dancing, and uh, traveling. What are your passions in life? I love spending time with animals and especially horses. Ever since I was a kid, I was always with horses, always in the stable. Tell me about your family life. I have uh, one brother and three sisters, and uh, my parents are still married. I grew up on a little bit of farm, and we did a lot of things together, worked together, played together, and it was a lot of fun. Dad was a stinker at times, but he was also a fun stinker to be with. He and I eventually uh, earned our pilot's licenses together. Lauren, tell me, uh, tell me some things about your family growing up. We're very close. That was one of the hardest parts of moving away for me because I'm very close to my parents. What was your growing up time like? Well, I'm super lucky because my parents are very relaxed and chill. And they're not very strict. Travis, are you in a relationship? <laughs> uh, I am not currently in a relationship, no. I'm out there trying to date, but uh, yeah. I've had several online dating accounts on a variety of sites mm -hmm. in the past, and I get frustrated and give up on them, and then I try again. I'm a widower, mm -hmm. and uh, but God sent me to somebody else and somebody else to me, and uh, we've been married now for five years. Could you draw the picture that you have of Lauren? I can try. 
I think she is probably fairly petite, five four, five five, and something in there. A bit too longer, maybe you know, shoulder length or longer. Um, brunette hair, probably fairly straight. I think she's probably 24, 25. I would say she's wearing jeans and then and like a blouse, not not a t-shirt. He has a mustache. I think he wears glasses. I think you're 78. I feel he's probably wearing like loafers. He's definitely not from California. I think Alaska. Um, I think he's 5'10", short brown hair, 30, 31 years old. I think he's like a t-shirt and jeans kind of guy. He doesn't have glasses, like Converse. I see her hair kind of up, 22. I don't see her in high heels, I get a low heel, soft, comfortable shoes. I heard a little something that sounded to me like a North Dakotan with a little Germanic touch there. You were really good, by the way. <laughs> nice. Can I see? Oh my gosh. You want me to drew Wonder Woman, so that's why you're oh, I love the way it. you are, but she did great. <laughs> she was a quick sketch, so. Oh, it's good. It's <laughs> really good. <laughs> nice to meet you in yeah, person yeah, now. Me too. I feel like you did got everything right. Pretty close, I guess. I mean, I would love to be five five, but <laughs> not quite there yet. <laughs> Close. You probably, how tall are you? You're I'm like five feet. Oh, okay. Yeah. You you so kind of were a little off on the height too, so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for me, so it's all right. I'm 39. Okay. Wow. Well, I said 24, 25. I think. Yeah. That close. Yeah, I'm 23. Oh wow. Yeah. So very close. <laughs> oh my gosh, you are wearing Converse. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Hello, Hi. Me. You don't look like what I had pictured. Yeah. And I can't tell you why, but where did you grow up? Sweden. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I should have known that. And my grandmother was from Sweden. Uh -huh. Great grandmother, excuse me. Great grandmother. Uh -huh. yeah. I guess that she was in her early 20s. 23. That's early. Yeah. Well, I spent a logging season in Alaska, yeah. but I think of Washington State as my birthplace. 78. 76. Wow, that I am good at this. No, I'm kidding. Yes, good. good. <laughs> For me, I mean, most of the assumptions people make about me are based on looking at me. But I mean, I get there's all kinds of assumptions people make yeah. about just my abilities or my inabilities to do certain things. People assume that I'm, you know, helpless or that I can't, that I don't live by myself and I don't date or that I can't date or that I'm not interested in that or whatever. Yeah. And again, just boys, based on looking at me, there's a lot of assumptions about my ability to do things. And prove them wrong. Yeah, <laughs> try. Yeah. Without seeing the person, your inter interpretation of what you're hearing can be really distorted. Knowing that you're Swedish, I can hear it, but yeah. it just wasn't that. You, you speak very Americanized. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's what I'm going for. So well, you're doing good. Well, you're so great. <laughs> yeah, it's it so nice, nice to meet you. you. I'll stand up so it's oh, easier. Oh, thank you. Oh, it's so wonderful. Yeah. It was nice to meet you. Talking you too. With you. It was. Very nice talking to you. You, too. you look kind, so I got that point yes, too. You, did. you look very kind. I have a kind heart. Yeah, I could hear that. <laughs> okay, so in that particular um, in that particular video, I, I selected that video for a reason, um, and it's a lot about when we ask people to join our PTA or people are um, interested in joining our PTA. Look not at what you think they are, who you think they are. Take your time to find out who they are and what their interests are. Um, the easiest thing to do with a lot of folks is, you know, if, uh, if, if a dad or a grandfather or an uncle um, decides that they want to be involved, the first thing everyone automatically jumps to is saying, hey, uh, maybe he can move the tables and stuff for us and help us set up and break down events. Well, that might be the case, but let's not automatically jump to the assumption that that's their strong suit or that's something that they want to do or that they're willing to do and might be but the only way to, to find out is to ask the question so start by asking their interests and then going from there and seeing what their interests are and how they align with the needs of your pta um and so now we're going to go into the difference between equity um and equality if you would um and so equity Equity is typically defined as treating everyone the same and giving everyone access to the same opportunities. I'm sorry, equality. Meanwhile, equity refers to proportional representation in those same opportunities. 
Basically, equity means recognizing that power imbalances exist within historical and modern context. And in order to understand equity, you must first recognize inequity. Um, so there's a picture that I mentioned earlier, and there is, right? The best illustration of the difference between equality and equity. Okay, um, so in the first picture, when you're looking at equality, everybody has a box, right? But what's the goal in that picture? The goal is for them to see over the fence. And because I gave everybody a box, everybody's equal, I'm done, I've done my job. Well, no, not really. Just because I gave everybody a box doesn't mean that everybody still has the same opportunity. Now, on the flip side of the coin, when you're looking at equity, everybody doesn't have a box, but everybody has the same opportunity to reach the goal. And the goal is to see over the fence. As you can see, the first person didn't need a box because he could already see over the fence, whereas the last person needed two boxes in order to see over the fence. So there's, again, for me, best illustration, um, best way to define the difference between equality and equity. Um, so then you have to ask yourself, how do you define equity within your PPA? Well, um, let's talk about something as simple as um, a spirit night, for instance, right? So if we have a spirit night that's open to all and we put it at a location that's close to the school, do we think that is equality or it's equity? Any takers? Okay, nobody? So I would say- I don't understand the question, it sounds muffled. Okay, my apologies. I'm saying we're gonna use the example of a spirit night, right? So if we, do a spirit night at any particular um, restaurant. We pick a restaurant that is in close proximity to the school and we send out all the communication in all the prevalent languages within our school community. Um, which of the two do we think that falls into, equality or equity? That's equality. I would say equity. And why? Well, I think wow. Oh, this is, oh. This is interesting, go ahead. Explain, Alexa, sorry. Well, the reason why I feel is equality is because you mentioned it's in close proximity, but does the restaurant serve foods that will appeal to everyone? Like it could have a, does it have a vegan option? Does it have, um, you know, uh, options where people would like to eat there? You know, it's not just strictly one particular option. Also, okay. if you're... If you're a magnet school, you have people from all over the county. So picking one location is an issue. And even if you're not a magnet school, not everybody has transportation or financing. Yes, the money is important too. How much is it going to cost to eat dinner for a family of four or five people? Am I able right. to afford it? Yeah. Absolutely. Paula, you wanted to add to that? Yes. Um, I am having issues with my phone, you guys, so I'm hoping this thing does not kick me off. Um, I don't know. Maybe I understood it wrong, but I was saying equity because even though they is proximity to school, everybody goes to the same school. So obviously you have to drop your child off at school. You're doing that anyways, but not necessarily quality because everybody may have different challenges taking their ch uh, children to school, get into that particular location to begin with. So that's why I said equity. Okay. And just like that, everybody has their own perception. And that's why it's important again, and I keep repeating the same thing, kind of to drive from the point that a diversity is important because in a class of what I think we've got seven people, including myself or eight, uh, somewhere in that ballpark, but um, everyone has a different response. My response, happened to be that particular um, example that I used was more equality and less equity because it's true. We didn't stop to see that the cuisine represented everybody. We didn't look to see how much it would cost. If the average you know, family is two and a half people or what have you, okay, well, how much would it cost to feed two people or three people um, versus the alternative? So looking at it is part of the, or looking at all the, information and then making a decision as part of the process in order to figure it out. So one of the things um, that I'll show you later on is there's a tool um, called the, what is it, the Florida Department of Ed Education Mapping Tool. So I know the statistics for my school, so I'll give you an example. My school is about 74.3% 
um, free or reduced lunch, which means that those folks right there are somewhere near the poverty line, which has to free or reduced lunch. So that means if I'm going to plan a spirit night, I need to make sure I take into account the cost of what it would take for your average family to eat. So if I went to a place that, you know, a lot of folks might go to, that's because those folks eat out of there, okay? But at the same time, how much would it cost for the rest? So you have to look at all spectrum. You have to look at all the information. And the important thing is, is where do you find that information? And, you know, something as simple as selecting a spirit night, saying, okay, well, maybe only got this much participation. Well, why? There's a lot of factors that go into that, but focus on the ones that you can. How much is it going to cost? What are they serving? And what days and what times are they available? So these are the things that you want to consider. Um, and then the last thing is, can you have equity without diversity? Any takers on that one? So I'll give my feedback on that. In my opinion, no, it's impossible. Because in order to make things equitable, you have to have diversity so that way you can accommodate all. If everybody is the same, then it's not equity. It's quality. Again, that's my take on it. And so now we're going to talk about inclusion. Um, and mostly we have pretty much covered this earlier when we were discussing uh, the story that I had with Michelle. Um, but inclusion, you know, do you know the members of your PTA? Um, the PTA should be a welcome environment where everyone is heard. And then you got to ask yourself, is that the case? When you are doing certain things, like we assume that everybody understands Robert's rules of order, but maybe they don't. And maybe, excuse me, maybe because they don't understand, they're afraid to speak up or share their input. So you want to make sure that you're taking into account all these things when you're conducting your meetings, when you're conducting your events, uh, spirit nights, whatever it is that you're doing, that everybody is welcome, everybody is included, and everybody has the same opportunity to voice their opinion, their concerns, their comments, and so on and so forth, and to participate. So, um, education, engagement, and empowerment. I went over this earlier um, as far as what those or that they were categories in response to DEI. I kind of answered this question, like, what do you think those categories mean? Um, so then you have to ask yourself, on what category do you think your PTA or your school community is in um, when it comes to DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion? So you ask yourself, okay, are we in the education phase where we still need some more information? We need to understand how to roll this out, how to reach people, how to make the information available, and how to deliver said information. Are we, or maybe you're in the engagement phase where, okay, we got the information, we know how to do it, but how do we actually execute, okay? Um, or then maybe you're in the last stage of empowerment. Empowerment meaning you're doing a great job, now we're gonna put together some um, frequently asked questions or maybe uh, best practices so that way we can share it with other schools. So in order for you to have the effective DEI uh, committee, effective DEI representation uh, and advocacy, you first gotta understand in what category you fall in, and then how are you going to get from one category to the next? Um, these are things that, again, like I said before at the beginning, I would love for all of you to participate and be involved in our DEI committee at the county level. Um, and we're talking about, you know, maybe a 30-minute conversation once a month, but my goal for DEI at the county is to find one, um, one initiative, one program, something that we can implement across the county at all schools and we can sustain it over the years, years being plural, something that every year that schools can make an effort to do to make sure everybody is or their board, their PTA, their school is diverse, everybody is uh, treated with equity, and then everybody is included. Um, so that's the goal or my goal for the DEI committee. And I very much like it if you all would consider joining. Um, again, it's not a huge time commitment, uh, but it's exactly what we're doing right now. We're going to sit down, we're going to have a conversation and figure out a great initiative and then figure out the plan on how we're going to roll out this initiative to everybody. And the other thing I will say that you guys get a little um, sneak peek on, um, during our general meeting earlier, the budget was approved. And on the budget, I have a line item for two things, one of which is a DEI conference for Seminole County. 
So it's going to be a conference that we're going to focus on DEI um, specifically, and then also a DEI grant where the different PTAs can compete um, with their by illustrating and showcasing their DEI initiatives. Uh, there will be rules. There will be submission instruction. Um, and they'll be awarded a small grant for the following year to help them further engage and empower the DEI process. Um, and so the idea is to, you know, this little, this sheet right here is also in the um, classwork section of the class. You can print it out and you can just brainstorm with your group, with your PTA, like, okay, where, where are we at? Um, and once you figure out where you're at, then you can kind of jot down a couple of things in each one of these categories to figure out, okay, this is where we are, this is where we want to go, and this is what we're going to do to get there. Or maybe all of these are question marks and you're not exactly sure. Maybe you need some more information or some more assistance. As a DEI chair at the county level, that's my job. So by all means, reach out to me um, and I can help you with that. And then we're going to go into the resources and information page. Um, the first thing out here I did put out is our diversity within the SCC PTA. And I thought it was important to showcase that um, for those of you that have already seen it, you've already, you know, saw it. But it was just that I wanted everyone to see the different backgrounds, the different uh, ethnicities, the different age categories, the different levels of experience um, that come from our PTA. Um, one of our board members is retired and used to be a teacher. Um, another one, um, is a lawyer and has her own business. Um, and then you've got, you know, you all are obviously already met Michelle as well too, but you've got so many different backgrounds, different um, experiences that when we come together to come up with a plan, it's going to be the best possible plan there is because we all have different experiences. I was in the Marines for 13 years. I've lived on a couple of different continents and in multiple states. And seen a lot of different things and interacted with a lot of different cultures. And because of that, I bring a different perspective. Um, and so there's that. Um, but it was important for me to add that because I want everybody to see that we practice what we preach. We want DEI, we want the diversity, the equity, the inclusion, and our board represents just that. Um, this next link right here is the National PTA DEI Toolkit it has a lot of resources, a lot of things that you can use for your DEI committees at your local levels. Um, and again, if there's something else that you need or something that you have questions or comments about, feel free to reach out to me. This is the actual link. Like I said, this class is being recorded, but this is the actual link if you were to click on it, but this is where it takes you. So you can see it right there. And then this is the Department of Education mapping tool which I'm going to take you all there right now because I think it's important for you all to see it. For those of you that may or may not have seen it previously um, in the first course, give it just a moment, it's loading. Um, but this is going to give you a lot of information about pretty much, you can look at any school that you want to anywhere in the state because it's a state website. Um, I'm going to post the, link in the chat here so you can see it um, in the event that it does not come up. This is a great resource, an excellent tool, because it's going to show you all the different um, categories that your particular school may or may not fall into. Um, here we go. We're going to share this tab instead. Okay. So can you all see that tab there? Is everybody still there? Did I lose anybody? Okay, yeah. All right, so when you're looking at it, um, this is, again, the link is inside the chat box there. But when you go into there, you can select the district, um, and then we'll just punch in real quick. Criminal. Um, and then once you select Seminole, it'll bring up all the schools in the Seminole County uh, School District. They're all listed here. Um, and then we'll use my school for an example here. So then once you click on it, it will give you the statistics for your school, teacher count, student count, enrollment by grade. Um, and then you have the different uh, race ethnicity groups here. Okay. Um, then it'll show you economically disadvantaged students, students with disabilities, 
the male to female ratio. Um, and then there's other things that you can click on in here to get the information that you need um, in order to make an informed decision for when you're planning the event or um, whatnot. So for me, it's important when I look at this to say, okay, well, if I decided, um, am I showing those details? Yeah, can you not see it? Oh, wait, because it opened in the new tab. Just kidding. Yeah, there you there go. You go. Sorry. Um, so there it is. But it'll show you all that information, and it's important. So that way, when you're making decisions on where to host the next spirit night or what type of um, DEI that you really think would be most effective um, or what can you do, maybe it's something as simple as making sure that all the information that you won't put out is translated in all the major languages in your school. Um, or maybe it's, I don't know, there's a bunch of different things, but all the information that you need is right here at your fingertips. Um, and, you know, it, just, it just pretty much showed it all to you. Um, so there's that. Again, the link is inside the chat box um, if you wanted it there. Um, this is another link here to a um, website that I found. Do we know when it will update for 2020, 2021? No, I'm not 100% sure when the Department of Education is going to update that particular page, um, but it's a good jump start, right? I will tell you that like enrollment numbers and things like that, um, at least for the Title I side, I know that that doesn't happen until um, October or November time. So I know for at least on the Title I perspective, when they're looking at what makes the school Title I and those numbers look like, they will update that stuff um, like October, November. So maybe that's on the same time frame uh, possible. Um, but okay, so you're very welcome, Michelle. Um, VI worksheets, again, like I said, it's a paid resource. All I did was Google and I went through a couple of different links to find something that I thought was um, beneficial to share with everybody. Um, and this is the tab here, and it takes you to this web page right here. And then on the left hand side, it has diversity and inclusion worksheets. Um, and there's a bunch of different things here that you can do in order to um, advocate for DEI. Um, or maybe you don't necessarily want to use these particular worksheets. Maybe you want to use this to jumpstart your own, give you an idea of, or a roadmap of where to start. But again, these are all um, great ways to showcase your DEI within your school. Very easy, but also effective and informative. And again, in the classwork section, there are two worksheets that I've created in there um, that you're more than welcome to use as well. Initially, I had planned on going through those um, so that way we can see what they look like and maybe go through them. But because of where we are on time, I'm going to say that um, unless, of course, you all wanted to see them, I can show it to you. Otherwise, you're more than welcome to go there and look for yourself. This last um, email or this last link right here is just so you all can email me with any questions, comments, concerns. Or if you just wanted to reach out and say, hey, I'd love to be a part of the county committee for DEI. Um, that's my email address. It's dei at fcctta.com. 